What's up, MFs? Welcome back to the Snake Pit. This is episode 203. We're finally back and we're better. I know it's been a while. I'm sorry. but I'm about to start turning these out a lot more. Um, today our guest is Emilio Garcia. He is a photographer and an artist. He's a cool dude. We had a great conversation. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Hope you guys check his, his stuff out. And um, if you're looking for a photographer, book through him. I'm sure he'll do a great job for you. And... Um, if you would please check out the newest podcast under Snake Pit Studios banner, that is um, Snake Pit Presents Lawn Chair Sports. That is a podcast with me, Mr. Swagadelic, where we give you weekly updates on sports. Um, right now, we are mainly focusing on the NFL because that is what's going on, but we talk broadly about sports, information, news, bets, everything. So um, check that one out if you would. We also have Lords of Film, uh, Hellasoft Presents Lords of Film, that's Jen's movie review podcast um we have snake pit presents pirate radio that's the one with the boys uh chris vargas mr swagadelic and bradley garcia and myself and then we have this one where we interview people and um have a good time so uh, if you also want to support us we are on patreon patreon.com slash snake pit studios five dollars a month get you bonus content shout out to jade and tyler um there you go guys i hope you i uh, hope you subscribe and I hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. And we are live here in the Snake Pit on a Friday night. What's up, brother? How What's you doing, up? man? I'm Can good. you uh, introduce yourself a little bit? Kind of let us know what you do and who you are. Yeah, I'm Emilio Garcia. I'm a photographer here locally in Lubbock, Texas. And I specialize mostly in alternative photography, dark art surreal horror that that type of photography what does that mean can, can you explain that for me uh yeah i mean for the most part like anybody that i i'm drawn to has their their they like dark art man uh, as far as like it's going to be more morbid style of photography i guess you could say how did you get into that uh, and i've been dabbling with cameras since i was probably like in high school but dark art i guess started early i was always intrigued to like horror like Sorry. started like doing photo shoots with blood and just started fucking around with shit like that at a very younger age i guess all right and man so, well, well let me i don't know you your friends with jen yeah you, you guys how long y'all been friends for for a while how long um, i met like 2016 you. maybe yeah, yeah. Yeah, 2016 maybe. Yeah, I was, it was through Tony and Guy, and it was my very first time applying for the photographic awards. And Amber, Leah, was my model, and I needed a photographer, so that was my first time hiring Emilio. And from there, just friendship, work, everything. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So let me, uh, let's go back a little bit further. What was your upbringing, your childhood? Can you, where were you born? Uh, I was born here. I love it. Yeah, I was born here. And I'm, or, I'm originally from Rawls, Texas, and I live currently live there now. I'm so small town, you know. I love just I love the small town. Yeah, for I love sure. that vibe. Yeah, you like shit. that shit. Home. Yeah, it keeps you out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? I get you. I get you. you know? So, what was your childhood like? What were you doing? What were you getting into? Shit. Played sports. I was always a runner. I always used to run. Um, just uh i didn't start getting into photography well i guess i it was it was weird because i always had i would always ask my parents for video cameras growing up so i always had a camcorder in my hand we always always at like the parties growing up <laughs> i don't mean to be disrespectful but yeah. you were that guy yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah okay. for sure man you, and you were just drawn to it i guess but at the time i didn't even know that's what was gonna come of it because i also grew up <laughs> My dad was a mechanic, so he always had, like, lowriders and hot rods and God stuff. God damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, even in my high school years when we would go to the car shows, I was the one taking pictures, you know, of the families just at the pretty well, much. Yeah, before, before we get into, like, what photography is, because you just actually kind of got some wheel spinning. You are capturing the moment. That's what you're yeah, doing. Bro. But before we get into that, let's get, I want an El Camino. Hey, I think that's the coolest car. Well, you're, man. I don't even give a fuck. <laughs> if care. it looks old, 
Because I feel like I am this. Because my uncle, shout out to him, he's in Phoenix. He right. does. He works at a lowrider shop. Right. He actually works on him, and I know how. You were asking me about doing this. Like I've learned about cultures doing this. So there's, you know, there's a very deep rooted horror culture. Yeah. Like it is not even a location, but if you're into it, you're into it. And yeah. I feel that same way about low riders. I think people are into it. Yeah, and man. and I feel disrespectful saying that, but I just want one. No. You know, and I just want and one. I think they're fucking want, cool. Not like a hot rider or Camino. You want it to be a low rider? I want it to be a low rider. Yeah, I but, like low riders, man. Yeah, and, man, I feel you. And it's like, this is why I say it feels disrespectful because I wouldn't be at the shows. Right. I really wouldn't be at the, the cruises the way she is mm-hmm. and the way like hey. people are. You know, and I say that like our people would be. I just want it because it's so cool. I, I want to be driving it. It's a fucking cool car, man. It's a I cool car. It. And I like low riders. I remember my uncle, you met him. Hi, man. He took me in, a, not this year, but a few years ago. We were actually in the hydro. Fucking, it was cool, man. I just, right. I like that shit. Yeah, I know it's dope. Bro. It is. And you know, you, you brought, you got my wheel spinning. Have you <laughs> ever seen that? Uh, there's a documentary about the Japanese. There's Japanese people. I've heard. It, you they know do what like I'm the saying? cholo shit, right? Yeah, that's their lifestyle, bro. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's crazy. I think it's pretty cool though, because I mean, they say that they're cool. they're like honoring the culture, you know, because they look at it. But that's a whole lifestyle down there too. That's what I've heard. Yeah, it's crazy. And I feel like if but, I go to Japan, they're gonna kill me. But sorry, sorry guys. <laughs> I mean, whatever. <laughs> nah, nah, like, no, that is cool, and I like yeah. like the. I like the lowrider bikes. Hey, I like the. I always wanted oh, one man. when I was a kid, man. Motherfucker, I really did. That shit was always like, yeah. I just like them. Like I'm not into like building and I'm not into like displaying it. I just want one, man. I'm like, what the fuck? I like um, I like your Caprice Classic. I like those cars. Yeah, they are. Bad. And then uh, a Regal. Is that what it is? Buick Regal. Yeah. There used to be this guy in Pose who had a or like a maroon Buick Regal with gold, this gold spokes. Right. It's like motherfucker. <laughs> this is like. I was just like man, these things are cool, dude. And my dad actually used to have a '66 Impala convertible. I like man, the Impalas, too. It was on 13s. <laughs> so your dad was bro. into that shit. Man, bro. You're crazy. You, would you say that, though? Like, that culture is like, you better be in it. Yeah, you, for you, sure. You're, there's no posers in this fucking thing, right? Man, bro. Sorry, I mean, guys. It's crazy because we grew up, man. My dad could never get away from engines. Like, yeah. it's a love for something. You know what I'm saying? That, I don't know, man. It's a passion, I guess you could say. I like I like watching that from like I say like from the I like watching people do that yeah because they know that shit like it's an interesting trait to know and an interesting life yeah when you know how motors run and how cars run like that like that's cool for sure it is cool I again I sorry for anybody listening (laughs) I would never get into it but it's cool to fucking watch man and it's cool like it's cool that you know Mexicans are into it and that is their thing that they've kind of taken in. Yeah. I like that too. I respect that too. Not for you. That, you like that shit too. Jen likes it a lot. She's part of the cruise and all that. I've only been to one car show here. Yeah. Kind of thing. It was pretty cool. I don't really go to car shows or anything. It was cool. I just really like literally just going to the cruise and being that girl that plays Deftones at the cruise or parking <laughs> and just seeing everybody burn out and like. People bring like their kids and their kids are hanging out of the windows. It's a lifestyle. It's just it is. really it's just cool. lifestyle. Man. That's what you I respect too. That's what I've learned yeah. from this. It's like when you live that lifestyle, that's cool. Whatever your lifestyle is, yeah. you got to live it. And For I respect sure. the fuck out of whoever lives. Whatever lifestyle you choose to live, yeah. to an extent, there's some things that are like whatever, but hold on. These fucking dogs. <laughs> yeah, but... I think it's my dogs, but yeah, I like when people immerse themselves in the culture and like sure. live it. You breathe it, you live it. That's kind of what I do, but in a different way. Yeah. I like that. That's kind of like what you grew up doing. Yeah, man. I mean, I still do it to this day. I you guess. like that shit? Yeah. It's fucking dogs. I'm yeah, sorry. Bro, I'm sorry. I mean, it's nice, dude. I mean, and you know, it's crazy because I want to dabble into that type of photography where I can show up at a cruise <laughs> or at meets and just. I have like social anxiety where it doesn't let me like I'm there in the moment, you know, I don't. That's what he said. He's like, I have social anxiety. Sorry so for like, putting you on there. No, good. He told me he pulled up. He's like, I have social anxiety. I'm like, well, there's nobody here. It's just us. <laughs> and, you know, we're just chilling. You know, you know, like, I, you I mean, leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, no, yeah, I was like, All right, yeah, I get that. Nah, just, but I mean, even then, I think those are just fears that are holding us back in life. You know, honestly, that's, that's really like. That's really surprising because, like, 
Dead ass last summer, me and Sinia started dabbling into the cruise, you know, for the first time. And I just wanted to get just immersed and I just wanted to go see it. And last summer was the summer of the Fujifilm Instamax, my little Polaroid camera. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But Sinia and I would literally go out there, park, get off four cars and meet with my little camera. I'd be like, what's your name? Can I take your picture in front of your car? And they'd be like, for what? And I'm like, no, just to take your picture and give it to you. And I was just, that's what I would do. I would just, literally, we would just talk to people. We met like a women's car club. And there was it was a row of just like low riders from the east side. And like, but it, it was literally just that simple. Like literally just that simple. As in like, can I take your picture? Like, you can have the picture. I just, you know. You have a cool car, dude. You know, and yes. yeah, like they would be like, oh, hell yeah, they put the lights on. Oh, let me, let me make it jump in the background and, you know, and just, okay, cool. Let's do it. You know, and yeah. that was just me, me and Sydney just wandering the fucking cruise. And I want to do that. And do it. Why, <laughs> you know, why, why don't you do it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. My ass just got out of there. Like, do it. Well, you're, you're, you're an established yeah. photographer, right? Yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you've done your thing. And I, and I bet people know your name. I know people know your name. Like, yeah. I just, just you, I don't know. I'm you, I'm still just that person, you know? Yeah. Like, I get uh, people walking up to me all the time, sometimes just out when I'm out at dinner, and it, it's that still freaks me out. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I'm just like that person, I guess. But it's cool. You know, I guess it's just something that... See, I'm there. I love it. I love, <laughs> I love when people tell me that shit. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, fucking, I fucking love it. I feel you. I you don't know. know. It's, been, it's been kind of... <laughs> yeah. It's It's got its... But like on on the photography level, was it always? I didn't. I didn't. It, again, it just hit me like that. You're you're capturing a moment. Yeah, for sure. Is that how you've always felt? That you're like, I yeah. just want to capture. Do you do you look back on your pictures? Oh yeah. And think about those moments, man, bro. Because it's like a. It isn't it kind of a form of time travel? It is. You know. Yeah. You just you. It oh even if you forgot about it when you have something physical to look back on or even in a, in a hard drive or whatever. That's nuts, bro. Does it ever like? Does it bring you like? Oh, I had to set up this moment, like all these memories of just even getting to the the shoot. Like it just like it captures all that in for you. Yeah, that's how I feel about when I do these. I'm like, oh, I remember that day. Yeah, Cause I have a shit memory. God, I have a shit memory. Yeah, but I think about pictures, that. There are certain pictures like this one, for instance. I mean, it just takes you back to like what we did to get there. Yeah, you know how the air felt. When did y'all take that? That was a fucking journey and adventure. <laughs> when was this? Like, uh, 2020. Um, yeah, I was like... Okay, yeah, I was, I was going to say, I don't think we were dating at that point, but I remember when you took those. The gist yeah. of, of probably the pen, like all that. Yeah, craziness. it was like when COVID. the world was like barely reacclimating. Kind of. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, but we... How did this shoot fucking come about? Show, show them the picture. Show like it's beautiful. One of these I literally wanted to cry. She did. She did. I did. You see? I was trying yeah, not I did to see cry. it. <laughs> um. Yeah. Show that one. No. Okay. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> beautiful. Hey, that's freaking cool. It's a cool frame. Like you guys. It's all good, man. And I just feel like I don't know. It just it came together. I mean, she turned me on to like music. I mean, too. Like prayers and i turned him into the cholo goth into the to the man you are huh? you know what I mean? <laughs> but i mean the like just goth. taking styles from like you know other like that too you know what i'm saying stuff that we had seen mm -hmm. um i feel like aesthetically we've always had the same like love for like the same kind of really dark aesthetic but also very deep rooted into like where we are, who we are, where we... Yeah, it's kind of crazy how that all meshes together. I've noticed that. And that's kind of, I think it maybe is. that's what we were trying to do with this. And, like, yeah. and even when we went to Phoenix, I noticed that because we went to the... Man. We went to... Uh, I never told show. you about... Fic uh, uh, Dave the guy Parley from... Yeah, Dave Parley. <laughs> we, I've seen the pictures. We went to yeah. his, his yeah. little oh. show and I was... I was actually like, I have to say that I was very surprised there wasn't that many people watching him. Like, this is no, this is great. I was and there was low riders. There was my fun. uncle knew the guys there. There was skateboarders. I'm like, this is what that is. It was this is what you guys are. Yeah, it's it's everything I'm trying yeah. to create here. Yeah, yeah. For sure. it was cool, man. Hey, dude, I'm a country. I'm a country kid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, that's how I grew yeah. up, bro. I grew up in the I love, I, love, <laughs> I was gonna. Oh, we'll bring that back up. I'm gonna bring that back in a minute. But yeah, man. I mean. <laughs> I just feel like it's dope to just take different styles that you don't see around here 
Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean that is that's who we are. I I feel like yeah, you know what I'm saying. But I mean, just to actually capture stuff, yeah, I, I like to. I take this a part. was literally like fucking put together. Like this is not, not even. A, yeah, I hope this isn't again. I don't. Yeah. Was this like one thing you? Is this what you do, or is it just one time you did? Like, do you frame it? Your pictures like this? Oh yeah, I you mean do? I've sold pictures before. I've been in. I've had art shows. I've Cause been you, there, yeah, because everything I've heard of you is from Jen, and yeah. you do like thrifting and stuff right yeah. like your house is like that yeah. right yeah, yeah yeah so that's what you you kind of just combine it all yeah bro can you kind of tell me a little bit about that you know i mean so that's just how you what you how you've operated yeah i guess so man i mean i'm the person that's not gonna go and spend a whole lot of money when you can i mean people give shit away bro like you know just it is surprising it, how much people give away. it's just crazy to me yeah and so like I don't know. There's certain times where I'm looking for like a certain thing. Like I have to have a clock. I'm into mirrors in my photography. So I'll go out every time. Anytime I have free time, I would go to a thrift store or through to the pound store or something. Here in Lubbock? Yeah. yeah. It's always with photography in mind, man. I can I can always find something and use it in a photo shoot later. That's um, just, uh, man, I'm always like. You were you were my he you you me a little bit of Josh like that's mm-hmm. just how your mind works yeah. right you're just like thinking of how this can work for sure man in the and future even if I don't use it I could sit for a while and then something will come up and I'll be like oh shit yeah. like I damn this has been here for two years but now I need it you know what yeah. I'm saying and or so, it's like, like with this like you made that hat in mind and you had like another red photo that you had done in the past yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. always with intention yeah, yeah. The, the skirt was thrifted i mean the beads were thrifted the only thing that i bought from that photo was like i ordered the fringe to go around the hat but i like doing all that shit you know what i'm saying like i love to like look at a photo and be like i seen that i put it into a picture you know what i'm saying like I, i've done shoots like that where it's like you're drawing but with, with- with the, with the camera, right? I grew up dyslexic. You know what I'm saying? So growing up dyslexic, I had a really hard time reading. I was always that person that was like, damn, this book don't have any pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real. Like, that's just the thing. Like, so, I mean, I also think that's why I was nervous because sometimes I don't know how to, like, come in here and be like, I just feel like on the spot. You know, it's like, I didn't know you. I love that. You know? This is my, this is my favorite part. Man, it's on the spot. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So just let it out. Yeah. But yeah, 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 man. I've always been that way. I love to thrift. I just, it's, that's a lifestyle within itself. You know what I'm saying? Like there people is. do live like that on, but I always have art in mind, bro. Like it's just something that I can, I've used uh, mirrors in my photos to convey like self-reflection. Um, just i don't know if you've ever seen that picture of um they're the mirror with the pill bottle i think i just passed it right here hold on where is that? this one yeah yeah yeah. okay so like i mean even what down to what she was wearing was thrifted you know and where'd you get that mirror uh thrift yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah i found it i found it at a thrift store i believe but I mean, just stuff like that, man. I just. Do you ever feel like like mirrors have like, because I've heard some people talk about mirrors and. I literally you know, just saw a TikTok. In a spooky way. Yeah, man. Yeah. I think it was actually Bradley that sent it to me. Somebody sent me something that was like, things to absolutely not thrift, and it was like a paranormal okay. thing, and it was like mirrors. Well, well dude. <laughs> well, well, one time I, she asked me to model for her, just like a short little thing, so they could use my hair and. And one of her students was like, don't stare in that mirror too long. Because I was. And I did have like a little existential crisis. And she, she called it out kind of. And she kind of like was like, you are. And I'm like, wait, yeah. Like mirrors. Like they, and this is like a, this is a Tony guy. And I'm like, <laughs> wait, you, you shouldn't stare in a mirror too long. Like, you know, like. No, that's trippy. There's some, weird, there's some weird things with mirrors. I've heard. Like, don't break a mirror. You, whatever, you know. Yeah. It's, it's cool as shit. Like, yeah. I like, I like, I like what. I like again, like back to like w- doing this. I like hearing people's perspective on things, like how they view objects and how they view, like how they live their life. And I'm like, that's cool. And you like, know, it's, that's it's, you. You know, it's a trip. Like when I talk, when I first met Jen, I would tell her like all the shit that I would buy. Like I'm into taxidermy too. And yeah. Just, and just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so like Jen's favorite thing. <laughs> no, she's a she. <laughs> 
but she she's the one that told i think brought it up and i don't think it had ever crossed my mind like you're not afraid to like bring the you know yeah it's always me i'm always like and i was like it's haunted what the fuck <laughs> i guess it never like even stopped to think about it like i'm just drawn to things without even i guess thinking in like that type of way but no uh, I think like that now sometimes. I'm like, what the fuck am I buying? You know? That is kind of the weird thing about buying from Thrift, right? You don't know where the origin of it. And Antique like, stores. Eh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Antiquing like that. There's stories me and, uh, about... Me and who, he's normally here, Bradley. We went to a, like, it's sort of like an antique. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? Uh, not the CDs. What is it? The record store. Yeah. And they had some, we were in the occult section. And I was like, this is kind of weird. That is some weird shit. Like, yeah. who knows what the fuck was going on with these things, man? I'm like, it's a trip, right? Yeah, man, it is for real. And I mean, it is. not to take it even darker. And I've said it before on this podcast because we've talked. I mean, right now, it's very obvious. Everybody is a thrifter reseller right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's in. We've seen that at the pound store. Yeah. Well, we were talking to a guest, and you know, like. There is like so much to thrift right now and there are so much modern pieces and so much like Forever 21 and Shein and shit like that because we're literally getting out of a pandemic. <laughs> that was a weird with, thing like, we learned. Half of the population is gone or whatever. And so it's like just all like, the people that died, this is their shit. Like it's literally <laughs> like just very modern clothing from very freshly dead people. And where do these where do these clothes go? Of course they get dumped. Yeah, for sure. You know, and so it's just kind of like that shit's like so fresh. I never thought about it like that, but I I do think <laughs> about it like as far as like when we go to estate sales, because mm-hmm. you find the best. And thing that's that, usually what it is. The people yeah. died. Yeah, we're taking some old man's death. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the vehicle died, family doesn't want to fuck with it, clear it out. That's Ooh, what that is. That's why I said, that's I'm writing it in my will, burn on my shit. Don't give it to nobody. <laughs> except, except the jacket. Burn me in a <laughs> pyre with all my shit, because I don't want nobody taking my shit. No. You know, I, I don't, don't want to. Yeah, if I die before you, can you can pick out what you what, what you want, but like I don't, you know, yeah, because I I mean I don't know. It's maybe it is a science. I do think like because there are jackets and shirts that I wear that are old and that I've imprinted my memories on, right? And I don't want you know hey, hey, selfishly clothes make you who you, yeah, you know what I'm saying. And there's some objects yeah, too for sure, and it's like the rings and shit. Like no, yeah. bear, no, 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 nobody gets that. Bury me with that shit. But I do think like you imprint your memory on that shit. Like yeah, people, bro. like because I think people have told stories like that where they <coughs> wear people's shit and you're like you feel it and they nah, nah, you know what? I'm not some witch or anything yeah. at all. But no, nah, I don't want to be. No, nah, just kill me and, and, and <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't. And I do, I mean, I don't even mean to get into it, but I, hey. to the witchcraft shit, like, I do think people are sinister and they're with the, what they want to leave behind. And I think it is the same way with mirrors. I do think like, yeah, yeah. there's some weird shit with the mirrors, man, especially like the older ones, you know, you never know yeah. what was it, what was, view- but even like on a historic level, it's cool to like, think about what was, what, what the history is behind one thing. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Sure. But then you do get dark. You do get into the dark realm of things. I think about that with cameras. Yeah. You know, when you thrift old cameras. You, you're you like, do that? You're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I recently started shooting on film again. So yeah. um, not like like professionally or anything. It's just bringing back like those memories from my friends and my family. Like at events, I'll have my cameras out. You film cameras, shoot, shoot it. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. that's an aesthetic, bro, within itself. It just... Something I took last year makes it look like it was took 20 years ago. And that's a beautiful thing because digital photography isn't is will never have no matter how many oh, apps right you use, whatever, like that's never you're never going to cre- recreate film. And, and it's coming back, bro. It really is. Dude, like, I learned how to develop film when I was in middle school. No it was shit. The coolest shit. I never got to learn. I wish, that, like, I, wish I had the, the tools to do it because yeah. I learned how to I think I could relearn it a little bit yeah for sure i remember it it was so that That's was so, cool. so fun i'm jealous like i like that <laughs> yeah our, like our school's never had nothing cool like that, shout out bro. to hutchinson middle school because my sister she's in middle school now she was telling me she takes digital photography and i was just rubbing in her face i learned how to do that cool. film man that that's, that's cool. kind of a lost art it is it is like because really my my neighbor actually he works in a and he was telling me like i was asking him like if i took film pictures could you develop them? he's like that's months if I if I took it, it would be months before you get the pictures back. Like it's like 
That's right? a cool shit, though. It is. You know, it is. It it's, is. A, it's a lost art. Man, that's beautiful, too. Yeah. I want to ask you about, can you go to that Indian headdress? Do you have, is that yours? The Indian headdress? Yeah, right there, that one. Is no. that, that's a, I want one of those. You want one of those? No, no disrespect to no, the, no, bro, to the no. natives, <laughs> but I, I might be native, so whatever. I want one of those. We all are, right? Yeah. <laughs> I want one of those so bad, dude. Was that hers uh, or was that yours? Yeah, I think she rented it from a boutique, honestly. Oh, for real, yeah, man. Yeah, those yeah. things are cool, man. Yeah, it's freaking sick. Hell yeah. So is, so. you guys, you guys are talking about it before we started filming. This is, what's the style called? Uh, Boudoir. 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 What yeah. is that? Can that's more. That that's more of like. Um, that's not what that was. No, no, no. Well, what the headdress one? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, because no disrespect, I'm seeing like a lot of women. And, you know, I don't know what what's is that what it is like? Oh yeah, the yeah, boudoir, yeah, yeah. Like, more boudoir. Anything that's going to be in like lingerie or yeah, like that's imply nudity. Is. That's that's the along the lines of the, that style of photography for sure. Dude, I don't want to go so bad. I always <laughs> wanted one, but there's an, yeah. yeah. We actually got a lot of slack for that photo shoot, honestly, man. For real? Yeah, really? from from the from the native community. Oh, you did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you react to that? I don't react. You know? No, nah, man, because you know what? I used to let things bother me too much and it would fuck up my anxiety. Like like I did something wrong, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And anything that I ever do is not within any kind of bad intentions, you know? It's yeah. Just I look at things like it's an art. Going back to um What did Kanye West recently fucking say? Um I know he's fucking crazy. No, he's not, he's cool. He's a genius. But, I yes, know. he is. I mean, I, I love Kanye. I'm just saying I do too. Um because recently with the whole gap thing, he was putting the clothes in like just in big bin. old like bins and it's like you had to dig through them. And instead of it being on racks. Right. And um, of course, the whole cancel culture shit tried to come for him and was like, Oh, that's disrespectful to homeless people. And he was like they asked him to speak on it, and he was like, I'm not going to apologize for my ideas. Like, I don't thank know. You, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. And that was, like, thank just you. the most perfect way. He's like, thank you want you. me to fucking apologize for being, like, a, like what do you say, a genius or, like, he a, is a genius. whatever. And he was like, fuck, you know. That's like, how I've always felt. Like, and, there, there's, there's no, there doesn't seem any disrespect in the pictures. And at this point, art is just so subjective. It's just, like, if you want to dig into anything, you can cancel anybody for anything. For anything. But also, it's just kind of, like... Well, you I know, mean, and it's not like, for everybody. Even like the headdress shoot, I feel like we grew up as Chicanos. We grew up with that being a really big form of art. You know, like mm -hmm. Chicano art. They always had their women with headdresses and and feathers on their head. You know, mm -hmm. and all this stuff. You know, so like even going to like fucking Mexican was, restaurants, everything is like Aztec or like there's always that one painting of the Indian man holding the woman. You know? yeah. I'm sure if you go to Mexico, that's like that's what that is. Yeah whatever everywhere bro. sorry to the no. people who are upset whatever it's it's, cool. it's art <laughs> it yeah. is art yeah for sure the, yeah there's no there's no disrespect behind that but i've i remember being a kid and i was like man i don't want one of those so bad like even now who i am i'm gonna buy one if i ever get a chance to buy one you bet your ass i'm gonna fucking buy one because those are so cool but i would wear it i would i would use it you yeah, know i'm not sure. gonna like disrespect it whatever but yeah i mean i, I like I like I like seeing people. It's it's also kind of weird because I try to dissect people's art, but I don't think it works because you know it's, it's ultimately a what's in your head. Yeah, you but I like to get my perspective. Like, why do you do that? What right. was your mindset behind doing these things? You know, like, but that's just kind of how you. I'm guessing that that this is your lifestyle. That's how you were raised. That's how you yeah, you view the world, right? That's what you. That's how you present yourself, right? Because you're saying you got. Anxiety, all this. This oh, is yeah. how you speak to the world. Hey, check it out, bro. Um, so as far like I have like certain pictures that like there's this um photographer that I look up to. His name's um, Nicholas Bruno, and he deals with like sleep uh, sleep paralysis, and like Tanda. so he like he thought he was possessed. Basically, you know what I'm saying? Like, didn't know what he was having these horrible dreams and and stuff like that. So he would he would like actually wake up and draw what he would see and then he would put he would put um it together in a picture you know and a lot of them ha uh, entail like him like being suffocated by a sheet coming out of the water you know just like just crazy shit bro like it, it's, it's crazy i should have had sleep paralysis today yeah i think it's a form of it. i was sleeping and 
I felt something tapping me. I was like, what the fuck is tapping me? And I, I just woke up and I'm like, it's not tapping me. Have you ever had one? Have oh, you ever man, had I, have like, I don't know. It's like in Spanish, it's called like a pesadilla or, or something. Like you feel like someone's sitting on you. Like you can call, you're calling for help maybe, and you just can't like move. You can't like, move. Yeah, yeah and that's like how a I dream within a dream. Because I was taking, a, I was taking a nap and somebody was tapping on me. And I was like, I, I know this. what Because I've had it so many times. Like, I know this is what it is. But I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, and you just wake up and you're like, what? it feels very real. And you're just like. Yeah, for sure. And that's what today actually, today's Friday. I just felt tapping and I'm like. Can you stop? Like I'm, I'm trying to sleep. For like sure. at this point, like I've, yeah. I've dealt with it. Like I've had very vivid dreams. I love my dreams. I just start doing that actually. I think because I have so many crazy dreams. I don't dream, man. I, I, don't, I don't dream. You know, man. I always wake up and I will ask my sister and my mom, like, "Did y'all dream?" And they're like, "No." Honestly, and I mean, do you think dream. it's because you just smoke a lot of weed? Because I think that's what. Well, that's I don't what know. they say. It suppresses the dreams. Maybe. I mean, but I have homies that smoke a lot of weed and they got some crazy ass dreams, though. Wow. You know what I'm I saying? Like, I don't, I don't know. I don't dream. I mean, it's sometimes like, well, I had stopped smoking recently for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I, when I started working out and stuff. And so, like, they were corny dreams, I guess you could say. They weren't like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but yeah. I mean, I'm like, what the hell was that about? <laughs> no, man, I reflect on my dreams a lot. Yeah. Because they're always so fun every night. This is a vivid dream, and sometimes it's sleep paralysis, and sometimes it's not. And I know, I know how to. Sometimes I know how to control it. Sometimes it's like I just let it go, right? Because it's crazy. I love my dreams. That's one of. I love sleeping because I like to dream, man. I think, and sometimes I can think about something, and I'll, I'll dream about it, right? And I'm like, uh, I'm living in this. That's cool. Weird world. Maybe probably. that's why I see the world the way I do too. Because yeah. I don't. I don't. I, 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 like that photographer, he brings his dreams to life, bro, and that shit's yeah. trippy. It's like, damn, what the hell was he going through? You know what I'm saying? Like, it makes you think. He, like, did this Last Supper thing. That's how He's, like, the reason why I looked into stacking. Do you know what stacking is? I have no idea what that is. So, um, for instance, uh, if I wanted... Do you got that cemetery picture? Which one? There's a, There might be a cemetery picture that I did with the, the American flag. Mm. I think I did scroll past the... Hold on. Where is it? I saw it. It's it's just a form of photography where you like you have your your, your camera set on the tripod, and um, you're just zoning out different frames. You know, in 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 the same area, to create. You know, so you're you're stacking like multiple pictures to create one image. Oh, okay. You know, so if I was gonna have someone floating in the air, you know, essentially standing on a stool, I take pictures. You know, with it, without the stool, with the stool, with the pers- the subject on on in the picture, and so you can create multiple different, you know, people in one frame of, of the of the photo, and it all be the same person, and so this is what this photographer does, and he just it's just all him, every little subject in, you know, it could be somebody in drowning, and he's tr- he's the person trying to save him. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> That's like, pretty cool. Yeah. So you have some you have some people that you kind of are inspired by. Yeah, for sure, man. I think everybody has to have a little bit of inspiration. Oh yeah, it comes from somewhere, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I, I thought I had seen something like what you're describing. I'm trying to find it. I don't remember, but I used to do that a lot, bro. I kind of haven't done it in a while, and like uh, when I would create a lot of my dark art, it would. Uh, I was always like going through something. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, like fucking having anxiety or if it was depression or whatever, like I would create the, my dark art, you know, and I've been good these last few years. So it's like, it hasn't <laughs> like, there's no need to like do it. Yeah. It's kind of, I, and I had to learn that cause I felt uninspired, like by looking at my pictures. And being, Is this like what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. yeah basically. Okay. Yeah. So that's just a head that had rolled out of, of the, you know, so I mean, the the subject's actually laying there in the picture. You know oh, what I'm okay. saying? So then you go and take it into, and you you edit it and what you need to do. Like that's no secret. A lot of people, wanna, <laughs> a lot of people want to know how it's done. Like I'm not that person that's gonna be like ah, uh, <laughs> like, like that one too. That's that ghost one too. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, they're like just it, floating. Yeah, for sure. So, is photography your 
like your main source of income, yeah. your job. Yes. How often are you doing it? Uh, I have my slow season. I just came out of my slow season, but I, I stack my photo shoots throughout the weekends. You know, a lot of people that I shoot with can't shoot during the week. You know, I had a couple of shoots this week, actually. And then tomorrow, pick up Sunday. And then I have to give myself time to edit, you know, when I'm doing quite a few uh, shoots throughout the week. So are people like when they hit you up or they they're like, you just do you kind of deal? Yeah, you'd be surprised. No, I don't get that very often. No. Sometimes. Sometimes I guess that's why I like reach out to be to other creatives sometimes to actually get that part of art out. You know, only recently I just started posting to my Facebook page. Um, that? Yeah. So only recently I started posting to my Facebook page. I'm also one of those guys that doesn't I didn't push my work very much these last couple of years. I, I guess, you know, I didn't have to, you know, so I wasn't really a big poster. <laughs> that's pretty cool <laughs> that one's the one that that one went viral for me actually that's crazy i never didn't you tell me that like his mom was pretty much holding him up or something yeah <laughs> well uh it would, the, it would think it was the the father or whoever was with her had him upside down to do that and the one other picture. photo yeah. uh, this yeah. one? on that one actually too <laughs> and then on the other one uh she, the mom was propping him up too so he did him. He did him there. Shout out to him. But that Shout one, little guy. that one went around. I think it like sixty five thousand shares on Facebook. Hell yeah, Two, yeah. There you go. That's yeah, bro. And I, I just it was crazy for me because that's what I do on a regular. You know, like when I when you talk about like photography, like I do kids, seniors, family pictures, quinceañeras. You know, so I mean. That's where you get your money. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah That's where yeah. I, I've learned a lot of people who do photography. That yeah, it turns into a job, bro. Yeah. I mean, when you when you have a passion for it, I believe that it has to. You know what I'm saying? If not, you're always going to be doing it just as a hobby, you know. And, and But, I mean, I made myself known through doing pictures like this, you know, like just having a vision. And I really haven't been able to, to do – to actually – dab like grab that audience you know i guess mm -hmm. you could say like the alternative for for sure as far as like tattooed people and mm -hmm. you know that kind of thing they're they're comfortable with me i mean look at me yeah. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so i do that's a big clientele base too it's like inked yeah, people I've, for sure i know you've done like a lot of tattoos and or not tattoos but you do like a lot of photography like this He's covered it. I was always that person that used to buy the um, would buy magazines, the tattoo magazines. I'd oh like, yeah. Oh man, I want to have the pictures in here one day. You know, like I just, I just felt that. I just, I was always the magazine guy though too with cars. I always used to have lowrider cars. Lowrider. Low rider magazines, dude. Yeah. Fuck yeah. For sure. That one too. Watch go. That one go down a little bit. The one with the gun in the mouth. So that dude actually came to me with this idea on the cool. Trigger. So suicide awareness? Yeah, well, he, uh, I guess he couldn't get his kid. Like, um, the mom had taken him from his kid or something, or the kid from him. And then he, he, was in, he was in Texas and she was in California or something. And so, like, the pictures at the bottom represent, like, his baby. If you see, like, notice the little Polaroids down there and everything. Yeah. And, like, he had the Bible on him. and Can this stuff have a have a, a wear on you? Can it get to you a little bit? Like, that's kind of some serious shit right there, you know? Yeah, bro. Can it? I mean, yeah, for sure. Because I've always, I've always asked that to, like, people who deal with real life shit. Like, does, do you ever bring that home or do you? Like that was the day. I'm I'm I'm, I'm back to being Emilio. Like, mm -hmm. does that ever wear on you a little bit? Yeah, bro. I mean, cause I I guess coming from somebody that has has dealt with like a form of of anxiety or depression that I feel like, yeah, bro. It, it just and then I'm that empathetic person. You know what I'm saying? Like I put myself. <laughs> I'm just being. I'm just being honest. Like I, I, I like that. I can't get into that space. Yeah, I never have been able to. Like that's just who I. Yeah. Just being honest with the people, man. I, I like. 
I can't get into that. Like, I don't know. I don't, I, that's why I'm asking you, like you, you feel that you yep. feel their pain and all yep. that. Right. I just never Man, have been able to. I mean, I'm not a psychopath or anything, but like, I just, like, I don't know. I said don't know. I'm not, I'm not thinking about, I am, you know, I understand people go through trouble and shit's real. Yeah, just can't, I just can't feel it for people, you know. I don't know what it is. Maybe some psychiatrist can break it down for me, please. And the thing you know? is, it's like, I don't know these people. You know what I'm saying? That's also like, it, right? You, oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing, too, is that I, I there's a very few people that I could probably count on my hand that I've actually worked with that I can call a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like it does, it turns into that, that, that thing where you don't want to bring that home. Is it hard when you don't know, like, like if they're not your friend, for say, like, is it hard to like put their their feelings out on a on a picture because you don't really connect with them, or is that because you are empathetic, like you're saying, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's where the feeling comes out in the in the picture. I guess so because you feel. I mean, even I mean, and I don't do I don't meet too many strangers where I do create. Door. This was like the one dude oh, I think yeah. that I've ever like that one. Like you know, he had a concept. Yes, oh, yeah. like you know what I'm saying. So yeah. like. Even when I meet strangers or like people that come to me, because not everybody that comes to me, I know, I, I don't know half the people that come to me, you know, and I just feel like you have to have that connect. That's that. That's the, my most comfortable is like I can't be out and come up to somebody like I've actually created a base where I've I've discussed something with this person and you know what I'm saying? And so that don't make things like for me. So, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So no, yeah, that's the game I play with this. It's like, do I want to talk to you before we do this? You know, do I want to like, <laughs> you know sit what? in silence so we can get it all out? Or do I want to be like, Hey, you know, yeah, no, that's the I'll game play I play you. doing this. That's just the truth. I'm like, ah, it's not to say I'm like a bad person. I don't think I'm a bad person, but I'm like, I just, I, nah, I, don't, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, even on the, like the other side of it, I can't connect on the, on the like high side of it. You know, when people are up and feeling great and all that, I can't connect with that either. Like, I, good for you. For you know, good for you. You don't smoke. No, not at all. No, man, no, I can't. For real, I can't do it. <laughs> no way. I, maybe I should. Then I guess I don't know. But, Experience. Have you but, ever gone high? Yeah, yeah, I fucking hate it. <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't smoke. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, but that's why. I like, but I guess you know what? I'm actually thinking about it. And that's why I like talking to people because right. when they talk about it, you know, we get a connection. For sure. And we feel each other. Yeah. So like with you, I'm gonna ask you like, how have you you've dealt with this depression and anxiety? How have you turned it into a positive in your life? Um, through the art, yeah, through right. The but art. other other ways, how have you? Um, the the exercise has that helped a lot. Oh yeah, for sure, bro. Hell yeah. Well, you've been kicking like, ass with running. Yeah. yeah, bro. You've done the two dogs thing, right? Yeah, I did. How was that? It was good. I want to do it that. Was, shout out to them. Shout out to Run Open. We finally got Wednesdays open. I might have to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's fun. I missed the I last did it few. Once. But I mean, hey, you run for a beer. But you know, it's that's all I need to hear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that was actually like that was a really good thing, bro. That I actually started. Cause you know, you look back at I look back at pictures of myself and I'm like, damn, who's that guy? You know what mm. I'm saying? So like you have to step back, back sometimes and reevaluate yourself. You know, even taking a break from photography, like that's what I needed, you know, for a little bit of the summer. I had to, you know, I had gotten so busy for for so long that I was just like, dang, I actually just need me to like. Yeah. I think about you know that, too, because we do this every week, three, four times a week. I'm like, what if I did take a break? It, the breaks are breaks are needed. Of, Reevaluation. Like, well, we're gonna go out of town in a few weeks, so okay. I might not do anything that week because I'm like, it's just constantly going. Right. And I, you know, I like that. Like that is the grind culture. Is what I've heard. That's what they call it, the grind culture. And I'm like, I like it. I like yeah. doing this. And I like because I feel like if I don't do this, I miss out. I got that fear. Was it FOMO? Do I got that. I got that so bad when I <laughs> when I don't do these, and I'm like, nah, oh man, because I, as much as I. I'm, man, I'm fucking spilling my heart out. As much as I like want people to win and shit, and I and I root for people and I promote people, I'm like, damn, that guy's out there doing that, and I'm not doing anything this week. What the fuck, he's gonna? And it's, me. it's just, he's, but that's the thing. It's just ah, like that's yeah. like almost like the best mindset to have because it's just like it's true. It's like the moment that you get relaxed, the person that wants it just the same as you do is gonna get it. Yeah. Yep. Or they just they want it just a little bit more, and they're gonna it's show up when you didn't. That's how, but taking oh, yeah. a break kind of helped you out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
for sure. Just get a little. When you took a break, were you? What'd you do? You just Should hang I, out. Yeah, I worked on my suburban. I have a suburban that I needed to pull an engine on. So I did that. So outside of photography, you're. This is your suburban, right? Yeah. Is that out there by the railroad tracks? That's actually in Ross, man. Oh, <laughs> damn. Hell yeah. But yeah, so you. These yeah, are that, some that of needed things, a little bit. Yeah, these are for some sure. of the things you do. Yeah, man. Outside of photography. Yeah. Good reset. Yes, I needed it, man. How'd you feel coming out of that? Good, bro. Good. Just recharged in general. You know, I started working out in that time. You know what? If I hadn't taken the break, then I wouldn't have. I guess essentially maybe had that mindset to be like, mm -hmm. hey, you know, and snap something. out of it, yeah. you know, but it's been good because I, I just remember how, how much I used to eat just because, I mean, that's why I had to take a break from smoking, you know, in general, because I was like, if I'm going to do this, I can't smoke because I know I love to eat. I love to eat. Me too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so it's like, and it makes it that much better <laughs> when you're high, right? Yeah. So it's like, you know, so I actually went in like, I cold turkey like sodas sugars like everything Damn. smoking for like a month for before i actually smoked again but yeah it was a good month before i i hadn't smoked and but it's been i've been picking it up here and there with the homies again but i mean it's yeah bro it was just a recharge in general but yeah damn that's maybe what i need it's me been, too it's been a long year we've yeah been, me too we've been doing good this year yeah Damn. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. But I was blessed this year as well. Can you um you you like a lot you got a lot of tattoos. Yeah. You like them? Yes. Who who did those? Is it different people? Yeah, man. A lot of you got a buddy Holly yeah. tattoo, right? I, do. I saw that. Yeah. That needs to be redone. It's old. <laughs> do you like him? I do. He was born here, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. There's a lot of, I've learned a lot of history about music and it all comes down to him. Yeah. He fucking a lot of people. Yeah, bro. Roots are down the Lubbock, Texas. Crazy. That's crazy, crazy how many people have come through here. That's what, that's what Bradley always tells if us. If Bradley was here, Bradley would take you on the journey. Yeah, man. Lubbock, it's, Texas. You, they all like listen ever like dabble into like the Mac Davis and just all that. He was from he was from here too. I've heard of him. Country I never, artist. You know, yeah. I've, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. gotten a little bit in the country now. I like it. It's like old school, old school, but yeah. That's that Mac Davis Street. That's old there. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, for sure. What'd you grow up listening to? Like music? Tejano, bro. Yeah. All Tejano. Uh, mainly until like probably I was in middle school. Then it was rap, I guess. Rap. Never, never really hardcore metal or nothing like that. You listen to that now? Ah, uh, sometimes. Hey, me and Josh, we were listening to Tejano mm -hmm. on the way to the bar. And then I, was like, I like it. Are you talking about Tejano music? Yeah. We, were, listen to we were listening to the radio. Oh, bet. And yeah. I just like it. I like it. It makes me sad that that's like a dying a dying art form. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. that sucks. It's a it's interesting. It's I like there. it. You like it? I like I like to listen to it. I won't put it on, but if somebody puts it on, I'm like, man, I really enjoy it. You look that so Tejano to me though. <laughs> it's, it's, it's um I would be lying if I didn't say because me and him are we're, we're starting to play music. Yeah, and we're starting to like start trying to do this music thing, and it's like I wouldn't I'd would be lying if I didn't tell you like. Some of that is influenced by the Tana we listen to. Yeah, for sure. I love it. Like that, just the... And that's what I, think, I grew up on. I think some of the style, like with, with the jackets that I'm into, the fringe, like mm -hmm. all that stuff, like that's, to me, it was never country. I think it, I got mo a fringe leather jacket. it like, mostly comes from country, but... Yeah, like the layered like jackets or like the anything with fringe or like the boots. That's why like, I want, like street, when it's like, cold, I like... like I like being around them old Mexicans because I like the way they dress. They, but I they, think they about just... like I literally think about like '90s Tejano. I think about like Moss and yeah, like Moss. Selena's band and singing all about that. Selena. Yeah, so I was <laughs> no, they about have Selena. like just those really pronounced outfits that are just fucking hard now. Can you look up uh, the Selena guitar? I want one of those. I was yeah. thinking about that today. With her face um, on it. Yeah, with her Selena Jackson guitar. Um, yeah, I was thinking about that, but. Uh, yeah, the one with her her husband, boyfriend. Yeah, that one. That's like a picture. Yeah. That I want that guitar. And I was thinking, like, would it be disrespectful if I had that guitar? Why because I be think that's fucking cool. Just because you're not into it? Uh, I don't know. What if her family was... Because, you know, her family's still around. 
I, I, I bet be like, plenty of people have doing? this guitar. That's a cool guitar, by the way. That is. A that's cool. Chris, right? Chris Perez. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. That's a. They probably try to sue him for having it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a cool guitar. No, I, I'm. Um, that's a dope ass guitar. Whether it's directly or indirectly, like I am very influenced by that actually because yeah. we grew. I, I I grew up listening to that too. Like you know, I remember all the old folks listening to that, getting drunk. Yeah. Just is in <laughs> now I listen to it. That's what I that's what I grew up recording, y'all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For real, for real. And, and, I mean, it's just part of the the culture, I guess, here. And it's cool. I yeah. like it. I like that shit. That's what, kind of what you grew up listening to. Oh yeah. For sure, man. To this day we'll we'll jam it. Yeah. For sure. Getting drunk. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but Norte Norteño's in right now, too, I guess you could say, like, that Mexican uh, from, like, actual, like, corridos and all that stuff. I'll listen to that. That's cool. I listen to that now, you know. We went, to, uh, we went to Bradley's brother's graduation, and <laughs> this little Mexican fool came up and started singing. It was actually, like, I enjoyed it. Like, uh, like Yeah, bro. There's some, there's something to be said about that. Like, there's just... He looks fucking I, hard. He has a sick he, outfit. There's a picture of me with him. Oh Can my god! Yeah, there is. Yeah. Literally, this guy walked in, and Roy's like, "Take a picture of me. Take a picture of me." I was like, <laughs> "Roy, tell he didn't, him even, he didn't even speak <laughs> English." <laughs> yeah. For real. No, Roy just went and stood next to him. No, nah, yeah. So it's That's like funny. it's um. I think it. Uh, Where's this guy? Oh, I guess I didn't. I, I have it archived. Let me send it. Like, why'd you take him off your Instagram? Because not enough people fucked with it. <laughs> then I don't know if it. Let me go and let me archive it. I guess it comes from this like you can feel it in their voice at life. I'm, I'm assuming it's not an easy life coming yeah, from Mexico sure. and all the, oh shit, the story archive. Damn no. Oh here it is. <laughs> it's it's showing on my profile now. That's my guy. Shout out to him, whoever you. I don't even know his name. Uh, did it not? Damn. Anyways, yeah. That's funny. I like that shit. You know, it's just it's fun to listen to. I think so. You grew up listening to all that. Now nah, what the fuck? There it is, right there. Uh -huh. There it is. Uh -huh. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that guy literally was like, he, he barely know. walked in, and was like, <laughs> oh, that's funny. I get a lot of what I how I dress from influence from them fools. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I guess you're right. You know, Tano. Yeah, for little, sure. A little bit of Lemmy Kilmeister. I love yeah, Lemmy. Yeah. You ever listen to Motorhead? No. Anyways, <laughs> he said anyways. Next subject. <laughs> I told you, bro. Do you know who Motorhead is? Oh, probably not. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if I if I heard <laughs> the music, no, no. no. If, you knew, if, you know, I, if you know, you know, you know, man. If I heard oh. the music, I probably would be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I told you I don't listen to that. He music. literally doesn't. We went to Anthrax once. Didn't fucking know what was going on. Bruh. You went to that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I was just like, what the He was just there. <laughs> cool. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bet. There were people swinging and shit. Boshing. <laughs> <laughs> she be trying to go to the even more intense shit. I'm like, I you ever do that, bro? No. He went I once can't. With you me. can't. I can't. And like, because... I would I, I would actually consider the guy who was playing our friend, Izzy, from the Gate Grouper. I'd consider him a friend. He's in this really cool, what well, is it, death metal? Yeah. Death metal band that travels the world. Hell yeah. Good for him, right? You know, he's doing his thing. Like, that's the dream. And I don't even listen to that shit. I'm like, because he's coming back to love. I'm like, I don't even know if I want to go. Like, I don't listen to that shit. I'm going to be there. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> like, I'm just like ah, you know that's cool shit man I mean I get it I like I, again I like like seeing people live their dream that's some fucking cool shit but. right I love death metal I love metal I love punk I love all things alternative and the only oh, the only type of music that I listen to that's not in the realm of my it's the shit I is showed she's, you yeah and I, I literally love, sent him like one playlist and yeah that was it I was like boom <laughs> and I think like, that's still one of my favorite playlists to yeah. this day like I might bet I showed him like prayers and, like, prayers is cool yeah bro yeah you like that? Like that's a cool style. Of yeah. Whatever. They, no, too bad they're not. So what happens? What, what happened between them? They're not too I don't anymore? know. I really don't know. Um, they're just literally no longer a group. Did you see that? Yeah. I don't know. If, I don't care if you put this in here. Um, did you see that shit where like Leah Farsayer was like talking shit about Dave Parley and his stories and like putting all these like big ass like texts and stuff? I think I did. Yeah, and he was. They were just talking shit, and then Dave Parley was like. 
Yeah, I want to talk to you either. They just, I don't know. Sucks though. Nice. I'll still check out prayers if I get to see him live, and I'll still check out Dave Parley if I get to see him again. So that's cool that you got to. Dude, that was fucking great. We went to Valorio. It made me coffee twice. Hopefully, one day we can get him on the pod. Um, the next day we went to a event that they had. It was like a food truck event, mm -hmm. but it was literally like I came back so inspired because, of course, I'm always trying to do fools and goals or whatever, and like that was like my biggest thing and. Like what I saw in Arizona is exactly what I was trying to do here, you know, but it was just kind of like, damn, this is doable. This is not a clusterfuck and it's not a mess. It's doable. Right. Um, but this event I went to is a food truck event, had clothing there, had a skating ramp inside. So they're skateboarders, had a tattoo artist in one room, had another room with art on the walls, low riders in the room and a hardcore band playing in the room. And then later on, Dave Parley finished in that room with a set. You know, and it was just very, like, yeah, it was just kidding. downtown Phoenix, and it's like, it's like Roy said, people weren't in that room watching him, but Appreciate people it. were just out and about in that event, and it was just really, the culture was just so evident there, and it was just beautiful, because it was just kind of like, damn, like, these are all the things I like. Right. And I literally just blend right in, you know, and it was just. It's, that's what I want to emulate here so bad because I know that I can pull from all these different roles that I'm connected It's all in. here. It's all here, but, you know, it's just not, I guess. And that's why, like, I want to create an event as in, like, you're into this, you're into this, but you guys, you know, and, like, I just want to create a melting pot of I I set the vibe, you bring you bring yourselves, I set the vibe. But, you know? No, I mean, I think that's completely doable, honestly. It's, it's all here. I just yeah. feel like they just need that. That, that push, that push, come. that place that, you know what I'm saying? And that's something that's done through the Sunday night cruises. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, if they are hosting, like, and a, that's done, why like I a really midnight. And to, to go to, like, the cruises last summer and, like, just get off my car and shit. Because I'm like, how do I want to represent this community and not be acclimated? Or, like, how do I want to, like, invite this community out to show their art? And like mesh these two art worlds together yeah. you know what i mean because i feel like there's such a, a definite sep not definite um but there is a separation with like the car club world and the sunday night cruise world and like the first friday in the cast and you know like where i'm trying to really bring this next time you know and so it's just kind of like why can't they bring together because this is art this these cars are art and, and we, these people and, that come and we have art. to remember that like i mean and this is not saying anything like no disrespect to anybody but mm -hmm. a lot of you know with casp i mean i know that they it's like people that i don't know if a lot of them are even from like this area they're mo moving artists a lot mostly mm -hmm. sometimes you know that it is our it is culture that mm -hmm. you know that is, there's art everywhere mm -hmm. there's art in the cars there's art in the people that paint the cars are artists bro mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. like that in itself should be, uh, uh, they should be meshed together mm -hmm. and it should be a place with all these higher up artists yeah. that are selling their paintings for, you know, God knows what. Yeah. I really do feel like it is, it's something that it's needs something to be done. It's something to be seen. It's to, something yeah, that for needs sure. to be displayed. That is um, been the interesting thing about doing this because I, I thought selfishly that I was going to bring worlds together, which I think I have, but. There have been worlds here. They're already here. There's there's a lot. You just got, you, you just got to go looking for it. Like, I'm, I don't. I, I say it. Unfortunately, you just got to go looking for it. But no, there. It's it's here. It is. It is right. You're right. It's fucking here. Mm -hmm. And maybe that is my job. I'm gonna bring that. And you know, to light. there's a bunch of people moving from you know moving out of state in into Texas. You know what I'm saying? So even if hopefully that, not from California. Well, I'm just kidding. You know, I mean, even if it is, I mean, that's a different culture. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna that's gonna turn everybody yeah. else into you know like hold on, what's this? You know what I'm Have saying? Have you felt a, a vibe change in Lubbock? Have you felt a shift in Lubbock? As in far as sense? art, just art yeah, goes? just yeah, well, you know something I mean, for a positive in Lubbock. Cause I'm not I'm new, I'm new to this like I'm, I've only been really diving deep into it for almost like two years now but I I do feel I mean, like we've been doing I've been around forever yeah. I guess I mean even the art because you've been around the art show for a long time too yeah and yeah I've been, had, like, I've been doing this for too. thirteen years do you I feel mean, like I guess there's a more so, ah. I mean I don't know I mean I guess I mean it's art Lubbock's actually appreciating 
I guess, it, you know, there's a, there's actually a designated area. I mean, because I remember back in the day, it was, you know, a couple of buildings, maybe. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, now that they're allowing murals to come up in the city, you know, and being able to represent just culture. I mean, or the mm-hmm. art culture in one, I guess. I think that's dope because Lubbock was very much not like that back in the day. You know what I'm saying? There was just like a historic building. Oh, you can't you can't put that painting there or whatever, but I don't know. Art speaks, man. And even when, you know, something where to be like, uh, it, you can't paint this here, there's going to be some kind of movement to like, hey, let's, you know, and it and it has. They're, they're, the, the communities come together. Mm-hmm. I was one of those people that was always, when I would travel to Texas, um, I, it was weird because I had never been told anything about my tattoos. You know what I'm saying? I never felt disrespected, never was like, you you can't come into this establishment because of your tattoos type of shit. And that was one thing that happened to me in Corpus. I was out at a tattoo convention, you know, and it happened where I was just stopped dead in my tracks. But the girl that was with me was covered in a Japanese bodysuit and in a dress, completely covered. She walks right in. I walk in after her. The dude's all, shh. Hey, bro, you can't come in here. I was like, what? And I, I literally thought he was joking because I'm that type of person that I'm like, are you serious right now? And he's like, yeah, bro, you can't come in here. He's like, you can't have any neck tattoos or any face tattoos to be in this establishment. I was like, what? I was like, that's a trip, right? I was like, but <laughs> she was more covered than I was. It was, and I was, And I looked at it like that, like, I was stopped because of my artwork. Like, what was the point? So I came back home, like, always like, man, at least I could come back to Lubbock, Texas and anywhere, (laughs) anywhere. And you know what I'm saying? And go anywhere and have a beer. You know, no one's going to trip on me. And so a couple more times that happened, happened to me in Austin and happened to me in San Antonio. Like years, there was years in between, you know, all this that happened. So I was just like, man. And then Beer Beer House House opened. (laughs) I remember that happened. You know what I'm saying? And that was, that was me. That was, <laughs> that was me. That wasn't like trying to be like a disrespect for anything. Like I respected their sign. Mm-hmm. I didn't walk into the establishment. I didn't, nothing. I just respected the sign because the sign said no neck, face, or head tattoos. And I was just like, damn. And the, my homie that I was with, she was covered. And so I was, I just, those other places had made me feel so little, I guess. Like, so like, damn, like, damn, I can't come in. I can't come in here. You know? So I was just like, I just decided to make a post about it. Just like, man, <laughs> shit. like just, you know, just ex- I was my friends yeah. and you know what I'm saying? And then it fucking went all over Lubbock. You know what I'm saying? The next thing, you know, Avalanche. Did Beer House like give like certificates to tattoo shops or some shit? Yeah, they did. Oh, uh, like, well, I know it was you. Avalanche Journal hit me up. KCBB Whoa. hit me up. I was just like, and I did like a little interview, but they were just t- asking me why, like I cared about it so much. And I was like, because I was like. Like, why can't I go in there? And in general, <laughs> I was like, this is a new restaurant to the city. You know what I'm saying? That had come from, I guess, San Antonio, a bigger city where I, re- I realized that. There are probably more gang affiliated people that you, whatever. I don't I, I don't see, I don't live in San Antonio. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what the vibe is down there like mm-hmm. that. So in general, I was just like, man, like if Lubbock's going to be that place that wants to host tattoo conventions and host all these art events, some of the nicest people and some of the most artistic people are walking around with tattoos all over their body. I was like, they can't do that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like. Mm-hmm. Like, and I get it. I, I know that some people, they're, but for every fucking one bad person, there's uh, thousands of other good. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it. But I was just, and I was just telling them, like, that's that's how I felt. Like, you can't <laughs> discriminate against, like, that. Because, yeah. I mean, you don't know us. And I've always, I've always said this. Like, like you everybody's. Can't, like, love me into that group of, like, <laughs> yeah. neck tattooed people. Like, what is that? I had never, that was so weird. I was yeah. just like, man. But I mean, hey, now everybody's now lame people have fucking Nick Tendus. Yeah, yeah. I'll say that. 
I'll say that right That's now. Sure, it's bro. not even. It's a trip. How and now, now I've seen a it's change like in tattoos. Tattoos. Bro, <laughs> it used to be like a rite of package now, passage. Now, and now nurses and, ta- and and teachers have fucking neck tattoos and nose piercings. I just is nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, that's that's all what I'm saying. Change, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, there's. I remember they used to hound Josh about wearing his sunglasses in that place. They used to be pricks at Beer House. I remember that. They used to I've be never, very much pricks. I've never gone, bro. I'm but <laughs> I went. I went last weekend. It was fine. Yeah, I mean, it's fine now. I mean, that's good. I shout, guess. Out, shout out to them. I mean, if they listen to this, at, if um, they do, hey. if you want to come talk about it, come on this podcast. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, for don't, sure. Uh, not for sure. These are facts. This is nothing. Nothing I mean, that's not facts. Yeah, for sure. But shout out them to them for changing that, and you know what I'm saying, like not looking at it different. You know what I'm saying, because. That's that's one way of bringing com- of people together, you know, actually getting a vibe of someone. Mm-hmm. It's like you don't know me until you're sitting across the table from me. That's why I like doing this. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how it is, bro. It's my favorite thing. Yeah. Conversation. Yes, sir. You got to listen to people. Yeah. You got to listen to people even when you don't agree with them. Yep. That's why some shit that's going on in the world scares the fuck out of me. But yeah, I ain't gonna get in that. Hey, right. That's, a, it, that's scares, a, it scares the fuck out of me. I'll just say that right now. That's why I don't watch TV no more, man. Bro, it scares me. Especially right. as a guy who does this. Scary shit, but whatever. You just gotta keep on keeping on. And, huh? Yep, I feel you. Do you believe in ghosts? Yeah. <laughs> Have you experienced that? Yes. Can you tell it me about it? Most recently, I was... <gasps> I, have, I don't Sorry. even think I haven't told you about this. Tell us about it. But I have these two homegirls that are always <laughs> wanting to... <laughs> these two homegirls. Shout out Heather and Cassie. Anyways, hey, um, they love cemeteries, bro. But they love cemeteries <laughs> at night. You know what I'm saying? Chingyao times two. And so there was this one night where we drove out. Have you ever been out to Estacado? It's yeah. A, like, out, I don't know. It's by like between Petersburg and... Oh, like, no. And it's like... Out middle no, of you're nowhere. About a town the cemetery is. Yeah, it's called. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I never. I, I know what the the area you're talking about, but never been out it's there. It's like in the. We it took us forever to even find it because it wasn't even like on the maps no more at one point. And uh, the roads we would take every time it was weird because every time we would try to get there, something would happen. Like there was this one time, like we're just driving down the dirt road. Excuse me, and we just hit a big old thing of mud. Like you couldn't tell it was mud, but it was mud. Which is so we were like calling people to come and get us out and shit. And so there was a couple of times that we never even got as to the cemetery because something would happen or we would never find the right road. And one day I actually went out there with, with a group of friends that knew exactly where it was at. So they took us out there and it was pretty chill. <laughs> like it was like, yeah. you know, I, I probably smoked a joint out there and shit. And that was all right. So then I remember calling the girls like a couple of days later and I was like, man, I found that road. Like mm-hmm. I found that road like to Estacado. Like, we should go out there. And so we we got we jumped in the ride and we went. Mm-hmm. We went and picked up some beers and shit. And we were out there. And then we just start seeing like this little flashing light, like from in the back of like the cemetery. There's no lights out here. There's no nothing like it's just really like fucking in the middle of cotton fields somewhere and you could just start seeing it and my friends are like oh like i want to go see what it is oh jesus you know and i'm like oh hell no at this point i'm already like it's probably smoking even made me more paranoid so i'm like no 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 i was like i'm gonna go get in the car i'm gonna go get in the car (laughs) and so we did we i did i won't say we i went and got in the car (laughs) within they finally came. We get into the car and even driving to the cemetery, there's just this big old roll of fucking trees. That's like you're going through a tunnel. Right. And so they decide to stop and they're like, oh, let's take pictures. And so like, with, you know, just with the cell phone or whatever. And so we're out there taking pictures, you know, and the rows, like the lights are hitting. So we're you can see the tunnel or whatever. And then they're just sitting and we finally get back into the car and they're just sitting there. My back window's down. And all I hear is, hey. And we're like, there's no one fucking out there, dude. Like in the middle oh, of no. nowhere. And so I was just like, go, 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 go. And uh, they were like, what? What? Why are you tripping? Like, I was so scared. They were like, why are you tripping? And you I was like, like I you didn't just hear that? Here. I was like, bro, you didn't just hear that? She's like, no. And Heather's driving. So Cassie's in the, in the passenger seat and... Cassie's like, what are you, wait, Heather, Heather. And then it got closer. 
And Heather still couldn't hear it, right? By the, the third but head. Was your friend hearing it by then? Yeah, the second, the, the one in the passenger seat ended up hearing it. And but it, they, I heard it the the second time, all three times, right? Mm -hmm. So by the second time, it was already like it was run like closer, mm -hmm. like it was approaching us, right? By the time Heather heard it, she was like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! My bad." She fucking floored the fucking <laughs> car, bro, and I was shaking because I heard it <laughs> at my ear, bro. Oh, no. And it was just this you loud. Didn't see fuck, no, I wasn't looking. Oh. I could just hear it at like. The side of my, and there was, the radio wasn't on, the car wasn't on. Like, she had turned it on already by, like, the second hey. Mm -hmm. And when, by the time she finally heard it, she just floored it, bro. I was like, I don't really think I had it. I'm, like, a big prayer. Like, I don't pray a lot, you know? That day I prayed, bro. <laughs> yeah, I really Wait, How long ago was this? Recently? Uh, Maybe, like, two years ago. Like, a year and a half ago. Oh, a recent. Oh, fuck. A recent. Oh, Can you look that up on Estacado Cemetery? Please. Recently, oh, it's like a year and a half ago, bro. It Damn. might even be just like a year ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just... And that shit fucked with me, bro, because I was like, she, what did she say? It was Skidwalker? Have you ever Skidwalkers, bro? Right? Yes. Yeah, she, that's what she was saying. It was. That's where you were at. What the hell? What are you doing out here? No, you have no business out here. <laughs> 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 the fuck are you doing? Out Is that there? it right there? Oh, no, yeah. it says Lubbock County. So yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. Y'all were in there. Pitch black. <laughs> Pitch can you go in there? Uh, yeah, bro. So that gate was like open? You can easily just jump that. I don't even think we had to. Is those the trees you're talking about? See, there's a, that, that one right there. It shows the little... Like, you just walk through it. It's, it's an opening. Whatever. But those are the trees you're talking about? Yeah, 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 bro. And it, are you sure yeah. you weren't trespassing? <laughs> no, it's a cemetery, bro. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's open. Because there's even people that have been buried out there recently. Recently, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell no! Yeah, it looks about west or east of Lubbock. It. It's flat. Yeah, it's very flat out there. But yeah, man, those those girls are a trip. They like doing that. I mean, I mean, I, it's cool to go out in cemetery and shit, but not at night. Fuck that. You've never done that, Jen? No. Never. I went out to the one in Lubbock at night. It was weird. Oh yeah, we did do that. Yeah. I've been out there. Not, I don't think I've even done that before because I mean, I it's not. I don't know. We've done it a couple. There's another one that's like uh, south of town called uh, Emma. And that one's like 1800s. Um, like 1800 cemetery. Like an old ass cemetery. Just old cobblestone, whatever the fucks. Yeah, bro. Ain't no telling what's buried out there. It's a trip. Fuck. But that's something too that's intriguing, I think. Like, I don't know, just even going to like um, New Orleans or something and going and seeing. I like, want to do that. You know what I'm saying? I want to like, do that. That within itself, you don't have to be there at night, but during the day, like, that's going to be. Mm -hmm. That's an old culture of voodoo and all that. Eerie. That's a weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, that has to feel some kind of way. Like, I just want to just... reiterate what happened. I just, I'm going to tell you what happened. Um, I think Bradley was sitting right there and Jen was sitting right there. Oh, my God. And I saw. A light, like a little orb. Right. And I saw it. I was like, I'm just going to ignore it. But in the video, you, uh, it, I blatantly was like, and I just ignored it. And Bradley saw it too. And then we saw it again. And Bradley was like, did you see that? And I was like, man, I, I'm i not going to say it. But I didn't want to say nothing. But I, because it, like, it looked like something was coming from, you can look at it right there. Like a, like a shadow was walking right there. And I was just oh, like. Oh, man. That was, recent. that was like a few a months ago, month a month ago. ago, two months ago. And then we've heard on this well, podcast like, some noise. Happened, and then he had already set up me and Bradley are smoking post show. And then Roy like got spooked because he saw it coming back. Like, Roy, yeah, like that's what happened. I, Roy and I, like me and Bradley were literally like talking to each other. Roy's in between us. And then Roy's like, guys, guys. And he just, that was it. Like he saw it coming back. But, oh, but a day or two before I came over to spend the night and I was walking up this pathway and I heard, hey, in a girl's voice, a woman's voice. I turned because I thought, I mean, you know, somebody over there. And of course, nobody's there. And I come inside and I'm like, is Bella yelling? That's his little sister. I'm like, was she yelling? You know, you no. Know. So yeah, she was talking, but like she wasn't whatever. So the next day, whenever he saw that shit in the yard, I was like, no, I told you somebody was saying, hey, in the yard. 
It's bitch. um it's some weird shit. That's a trick. One time we got like a weird bark. You can hear it on the podcast. I'll, I'll send you the video. It's weird. Yeah. We, were just like, we were literally talking about spooky shit. And, then and at the old setup was... <laughs> we the, didn't have these curtains. W- yeah, and there used to be like another table that would be behind here. And the guy sitting there, he heard a bark. Next He's to like, him. nope, nope. And I was like, yeah, let's yeah. end this podcast. It was, it, it was in the garage. The bark was like in between the two in the garage. I've experienced some, some paranormal, man. I believe it because <laughs> it's, oh, fucking, yeah. it's fucking weird, man. I'm telling you that, that day. Yeah, that day was. I didn't uh, know that the that skinwalker type shit was this close to home. I mean, it makes sense. They roam this area. That's fucking weird. Man. Yeah, bro. You ever you ever get into like UFOs or any of that? Yeah, bro. You ever seen one? Nah, man. No. Well, you know what's a trip? I feel like I had set up. Um, I had set up a uh, long exposure. Uh, picture sometimes i take pictures of the moon and stars and shit and so like to my eye so like i had opened up my uh shutter to like one maybe one second you know what i'm saying so that it would stay open and i'm sitting here looking at the sky and i never seen anything and when the when the uh picture fucking finally clicked over i look looking back and there's this white little fucking like orb that had dragged across the screen I'll even send you that one. Yeah, send me that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like one second, bro, and I'm sitting up looking at the sky. Like, well, you live out there in Rawls, man. Is is there? You know what I'm saying? Open sky out oh, there. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. No lights and anything. Nah, bro. Hell yeah. It's beautiful. I mean, even you could drive out fucking like, I don't know, two miles outside of town, and you're just in a field. You're just. Would well, you live like a residential or? Yeah. Oh, you live near people. Yeah. It gets spooky out there. I used to hang out a lot in posts, man. I, that's where I saw my first. Paranormal activity. What was that? I was uh I was in an alleyway, and uh, cause my 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 I call him Big G and Nana, my grandpa and my my grandma live in one area, and then there's an alley, and then his brother lives there, and his brother Paul has a son Alan, which is my cousin, the same age, so we hung out a lot back in the day, and I was at his house, and I had to go home, get the phone call, so I was like, all right, I go home, I go in the alley, and I see this big ass shadow clear as like because there was light and then there was a shadow and right. i was just like no there's no way there's no way <laughs> and it fucking disappeared and i felt the wind hit me and then i heard a voice out over there and i was like oh man and i just ran i just ran inside and i right. didn't say anything and that's I was, a, that's like it's it's just, just, just these old i think these older towns have some fucking thing going and how do you right? feel like how does that like i don't know it's hard for that day dude it was that was a hard like i couldn't even explain uh, the way i felt like that was it was i was like damn what the fuck yeah i, I was young when that happened yeah. so but now i'm like because i do like i'm saying like i believe like things happen in these towns yeah that are just that don't happen in cities because i think cities it sounds funny saying it, but I think cities, just the city life kind of takes away the magic of whatever is going on out in this other world we can't see. So that's why I believe, like, whatever happened there, happened there, man. That thing stays there because that's yeah. that's an older part of history that we just don't understand. Right. And, like, same with, like, Rawls and the outside. Like, Lubbock's just, Lubbock, it's a city, it's life, and there's too much life to go on. Right, I feel you. And, and what I saw there was fucking spooky it was spooky man and i i don't i don't even like even now i'm an adult i don't like going in that alley i don't want to go in that alley like it's like <laughs> it's it's ooky spooky bro you know it's i had and i don't think before that one time i took a picture i'm not even gonna i, I can I, I can send you this one too so check it um i did a photo shoot one day and like I, like i said I'm, i don't ever have been religious i guess you could say you know and so like even when um i did this photo shoot i had a an, did an inverted cross on the hat i made or whatever and so like i didn't think anything of it like i'm just like bet you know and then i'm i do the photo shoot and we're doing it in front of an abandoned house and i don't even think i've said this story out loud before so but so i did it we're doing it at an abandoned house and there's these two windows that are just broken out right and so I'm going through all the pictures, through all the frames or whatever. And then this little white like head is just, you can just see it in, in the window, right? Like just standing like, and I'm like, what the fuck? I zoom in and you can clearly tell that it's like, 
I don't know, bro. That shit scared me. And it was like the first day I was like, oh my God, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I was, it, that I still have that picture. That's, that's the only time that I ever, besides that white little speck I told you that dragged across the screen, that one and that in that orb or whatever it is that's sticking out of the window, that's a trip, bro. That's what it looked like when we saw it. It was like a I white like, orb. Wow. It was weird. It was crazy. But other than that, I mean, that was my first time ever experiencing something like that. That was, it was, it was scary. Do you, you don't, like, do you believe in something higher, like a higher power or anything? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, or you, whatever, I guess. There's, <laughs> I mean, there, it is what it is. I mean, there, if there, there's a God, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, if that's what you believe in, you know, I mean, that's cool too. Well, I mean, yeah, I see, I see it like that. If God's real, then so is the devil. Yeah, for sure. And so is these other things yeah, that man. we can fucking see, man. Yeah, you can't say that. You know, there's evil. There's, you know. Sometimes it's fun to like, not fun, but I open my mind to it. And uh, sometimes the, I don't. But we also we also live in this little speck of, you know, the universe is out there, bro. There's so much more going on. Spooky, than, spooky thinking about that, too. You know, yeah, for sure. Like that's I could get lost in that, bro. Like parallel universes and just space in general. Like you never know, bro. And if they're here, they're already here, bro. They're just walking. They're definitely here, you know. I think. Have you <laughs> seen Nope? Did you watch Nope? I haven't yet. No, it's a good movie. Yeah. My, my cousin told me about it the other day. It's a really good it, movie. Yeah. I really like that one. That sold me on Jordan Peterson. I or Jordan yeah. with Jordan Peele. <laughs> I like Jordan Peterson too, though. But no, Jordan Peele because that's a yeah. That's a interesting take on it. And I think that's what it would be like if it was real. For sure. Spoiler. But yeah. If there was extraterrestrials yeah. or some fucking monster that lived that we he, couldn't explain. He twisted on y'all again in the movie. Was it like what y'all expected? Hey, there is a twist. I yeah, didn't I'll know what that. to expect. Oh, yeah. There's a it twist because yeah. I'll tell you that because you don't, yeah, you don't know. And then you're like, what But it's the a fuck? really cool take on an alien film. Yeah, I like it. And I feel like that really is what we would be. Yeah, like you said. That's, that's exactly how we would react. It's an and, and I don't know, I like getting lost sometimes in that paranormal and alien. Well, more so the paranormal. Yeah. Because I do believe aliens are real. This is like yeah. fact. Yeah, for sure. But paranormal is like, we can't explain that. It's an odd thing. I just like exists. hearing spooky stories. Huh? I just love hearing spooky stories. Yeah, man. They're. When, it's weird shit is happening in this garage I'm not gonna lie like it's just weird you tripping <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know man I'm like well, twice three times it's happening here and we're just like what the fuck and we just ignored it like it's just yeah. going on about our day after the next day cause yeah, for sure. it's like yo whatever man I can't say I dwelled on that situation either yeah. too much you know what I'm saying cause I was just like oh I was probably scared like like that happened that I don't want to think about it too hard yeah, <laughs> yeah that's me did your friends ever talk about it um, the two girls and they they loved that shit. They were like, oh, they wanted it. Yeah, they were like, oh, we got to I didn't even know what a skinwalker skin was. Walk. Yeah, that's I didn't even know. Interesting. It. I didn't even think about that when you said that. I didn't even. That's a spooky. Go to, can you go to YouTube and go to a skinwalker? Oh, I didn't even. I don't want to be the one. See, I'm telling you, I'm so like in my own little bubble that I don't hear shit. I'm like, oh, shit, that's what that is. Like, so. Do you yeah, have TikTok? But... No, I don't. Okay. Watch this video. Mm -mm. I, mean, watch I was this like, video. I would get you on skinwalker when talk. It... What, what am I looking for? Skinwalker. I don't want to type it. Why? I mean, you're I'm mean, scared. Yeah, I mean, it's coming out of my fingers. Um, that Skinwalker Ranch, I think that might be it. Down. This? Hold on. Let's just, no, go down a little bit more. Skinwalker Screaming. Type that in. Because he's like, you remember that video? You know what I'm talking about? I don't want to know. Screaming help. Yeah, that one. Oh, yeah. Oh, bro. See, and that's, and I didn't even know about that. Uh... What happened to that video? Did they take it down? That's even going to be even more spooky. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Is it the one where it's like in a field? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, he's like in that field. He's like, help. See, and, and, and for me to say that, like, I didn't even know about that or what that was. And for me to hear that and then, then to say that afterwards, I was like, well, what are y'all talking about? Roy, it's not here. That's it's, scary. It's kind of weird that it's no. not, it's not on the, the Oh. Oh, no. Let me see if I can find it. Now it's confirmed. No. God, I'm like sweaty. It's fucking scary. It's like a dude. And you can just see him like moving like, around. Because so you know the skinwalker lore, right? You want to explain that a little bit? 
Apparently, they're just like really like evil, evil spirits, like demons or whatever. But what they do is like um, it's, they, they it's can, Native they American can, they witches. They can take the appearance of like man or animal or whatever, but sometimes not fully. Right. And so they can't. They can mimic what we look like, but they can't always mimic our voices or like our movements. It's my understanding. It's like Native American um, lechuza. Okay. Mm -hmm. But okay. it's they can. Yeah, that's essentially what it is. Exactly what that is. Okay. And so, like that video that he's talking about. Oh, here it is. You I can see it. somebody walking in a field, but they're like walking all fucked up, and they are just wandering aimlessly, screaming for help. I can't pull it up on my phone, but I'll show you. Look how they walk. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's like, ah, that's, that's, like I saw. that's what you see. <laughs> oh, hell no, bro. There's another one that went viral. Um, there's another one that went viral. And it is a woman in her house. And she's hearing her own voice telling her to come to the room. What? So she hears her own voice down the hallway saying, come here. Come here. And so she's, of course, like, that's literally my voice down the hall. Locks herself in another room. And immediately, as soon as she closes the door, her door starts, like, fucking shaking. Oh, I see. Yeah. No. He's like, no. That's going to be a no for me. <laughs> Hold on. I want to play it on this. I don't want to play it. Did you send it? Oh, no. Yo, that. That's exactly, like, and like I said, I didn't even know about that stuff, so. I Be careful, Emilio. That shit's scary. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. I heard that shit. Put a Facebook Messenger, would you? 27, 27. 27? 27. Oh, 127. Somebody! Okay, now yeah. we're just, just leave it on that. Don't do full screen. But how do I make it? No, you know, don't make it full screen because it'll fuck it up. Uh, volume turn it Oh, man, what the hell? Maybe it's not meant to be. Right. <laughs> I'll say it's a good thing. But that's um, what we what I probably you probably saw. I didn't see shit. I didn't hear it. <laughs> I heard it. Oh, you heard? Yeah, I didn't see it. I wasn't hoping to see nothing, dog, on the cool. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> yeah. oh, man. That's crazy. That noise that, that noise enough will do it to you, bro. It's just like chills and everything. Mm -hmm. I'll be damned, man. But, what are, um, but, what are your, some, some of your plans for the future? In yeah, the what are you doing at First Friday? Okay, so um, the next first Friday on the 7th of October, um, this is kind of me just branching out to say fuck it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and so um, the photos with strangers thing, you it's usually done with like someone just walking the street and going up to people, random people and asking for portraits. And so I announced it. Um, I just felt like this is a way for me to put it out there as far as Anybody that's ever liked my work, has ever wanted to meet me, has ever just wanted to, you know, shoot the shit or whatever to come out and, you know. Like, come find me. Yeah, not not even. I'll be walking looking for yeah. people, too. You know, and I told people just to come out and, you know, dress up if they need to. And so that's what I'm going to do at First Friday is just kind of link with people and, you know, give people five minute, 10 minute photo shoots while I'm there. Oh, hell yeah. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And just, you know. Everything's free. You know, I'm not going to not charging for any of this. This is my project. I just kind of want to do something as far as, you know, me actually meeting more people in person and not it being, you know, behind a screen all the time as far as, you know, because I'm not that type of artist that actually goes out a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm very sheltered. I kind of well, need to show. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I no, I know. That's, a, that's been a thing. But like, I just, you know, trusting people is kind of hard. You know what I'm I saying for me? That. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm just very, like, mm. I'm not a person that don't like to tell his ideas to too many people because it's, like, don't, you know, I've been dirty a few times. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just been, Oh, like, I know what you're saying. So, it's, like, you know, sometimes you just got to humble myself and 
And, you know, but this is something that I've been wanting to do. Um, plans, uh, I, I want to do a coffee table book. I've been working on that for a while. And the problem with that was, is I always used to try to push my work, like try to create stuff in like mm -hmm. such an, like a small amount of time that when I actually step back and do my research, like photographers that are doing coffee table books, it's like a- Those are like archives. It's something that they've done from 10 years, you know, to 10 years of work, 15 years of work. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm there, you know, I'm, I've already have- like He's got one, it's a Metallica one. It's a Ross ha Halfling? Halfling. That dude's been with them since 84. Yeah, Hell and yeah. it was it was literally a coffee <laughs> table book years. of all those years, but it was specifically the Black Album year. Oh yeah, yeah, but he's been with them for a yeah. long See, and that's time. just that's so beautiful to me, bro. And I just I don't know, just like from the places that I've traveled to, just anything in general. But I'm so intrigued with people, you know. I also want to get to know people and see like what their background is. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm intrigued with looks, style, you know, their whole aesthetic. I'm just like, damn, look at that person. They're cool. <laughs> you know, I want to I want to photograph that person. Not even knowing of even knowing anything about them, mm -hmm. and I think that's the beautiful thing about it. But that's it too. It's just like you only look like this once, you know. So to yeah. be able just to get captured, like you're only that. young, dumb, and fully come once. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but for sure. I mean, that's yeah. the whole the whole thing with this is I'm just gonna. It's just a way for me to network and and actually do something different. Yeah, and that's like I don't know. I think that's why I really like stepped into like taking more pictures and like being more open to collaborating and stuff is because like after doing this and like you know like even just like through you sending them to me like these pictures were just like damn like that's 2020 yeah. you know and like it was just kind of like um like it's it's like i just said like we're not gonna look like this forever we're not going to like this is the extension of 2020 for me you know what i mean I have other pictures that I took with Manderbot last year. And it's like, that was the extension of 2021 in me. You know what I mean? Right. And it's like, I always like make jokes of like, I want to do more photography projects because one day I'm not going to be here and my fucking grandkids better have a hallway of my fucking photography honoring yeah, me. For sure. And you know, good the big, photography. The cool, thing, talking. the cool thing about f photography for me as well yeah. is like, I've had so my, my my biggest clientele base is women, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of the women that come to me is like they're coming off of like, I was feeling insecure. I've been, you and know, it's like you told me that it's like you build relationships whether it's like starting off as just a random photo shoot and then you turn into maternity photo shoots and oh yeah yeah and that's what's that's what that's that's awesome because I've I've met families mm -hmm. you know newborn babies and, and that's the cool thing about it. And, uh, uh, my, my parents. Just give me a second. They're just so insanely creative for just the way that their mind works. It's just so cool. But it's one of those things of like, those really are like, like, to be able to see, to be able to like, visualize truly is a, vi is, is a gift and a blessing. To have like vision and to have like passion to like bring it to life, you know? Right. Yeah, and so sure. it's just kind of like you have to like flex those creative muscles. It's like working out, you yes. know? Like how, how do you get better at running? How does it get easier if you don't do it all yep. the time? So it's like, how do you get more creative? How do you build an eye? How do you strengthen those eyes if you're not working creatively, you yeah. know? And that's something I've really had to challenge myself with this year of like, how do I want to be at the top? Yes. I always used to be that, like... Like, I need to have a lot under my belt. Because just because I love it doesn't mean I'm built for it yet. Yes. And so I've said a lot of, st like, a lot of stuff to, like... I, I always said that this is the year that I start saying, like, no to m more to people and, like, yes to myself. Because I was always, like, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. For, like, all kinds of projects. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And where am I going to find the time to do... The things that I want to do when I'm just, you know what I'm saying? So, like, that's, that is my goal is, mm -hmm. like, to really, like, not have to shoot, you know, the things that I, I do on on a regular basis and, and be more of an artist as mm -hmm. far as my photography. It's all art. Yeah. You know, it's all art. 
It yeah. is. You know what I'm saying? And there's but, always like things to be learned even through those like bread yeah, and butter activities for of, sure. like weddings or senior portraits and shit. Dude, like that. and those are fun. See, Dude, like you know what I'm saying? Senior portraits are so dope. Yeah. Like I, I love that. He's, I really he's do. worked with my little baby cousin before. Because I've twice. I've yeah. grown I mean they I get to see them and I've been doing that since like 2010, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like I see people now and I'm like, hell yeah. Yeah. You know, does so, they ever come full circle? It's like you start off with their like senior portraits and then before you know it, you're like shooting their wedding. I have done <laughs> <laughs> I have done stuff like that. I don't think it's as far as like weddings, but engagement pictures. That would make and, me emotional. I'll be crying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's cool. I think that's that's Yeah. You can't. You, you can't and I have those up. moments with like clients where like mom brings them in at fourteen and then there I am doing prom and then graduation and then that's their last happened. appointment before they go off wherever they go. Yeah, I've been doing what that. happened with the Adam that I saw Saturday. Yeah. I've been doing this long enough that I can say I've I've created some pretty cool relationships with people over the years, man. Mm -hmm. And just seeing them grow, mm -hmm. that's really cool. That's cool. For sure. Well, I'll be down, dude. That's pretty cool. Hell yeah. I like it. Well, man, I uh, appreciate you being here, talking to us. Hell yeah. Let us, letting us know a little bit about your life. Yeah, for sure. If you want to drink a few beers, we can, but I'm going to... Go ahead and end this one here pretty yeah, soon. Yeah, for sure. Bet. I think we got some good time. Yeah, man. Um, I appreciate you having me on. Where can they follow you? Where can they book you if they want to? Um, Emilio Ray. Uh, Emilio Ray. Damn, I done said my Instagram. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Emilio Garcia Photography on Instagram um, and Facebook. Um, email me at Emilio Garcia Photography at Outlook.com. And yeah, get you scheduled, man. Uh, can when are they when are you available? Are you seven days a week, man. There you go. Yeah, seven People, days a week. Hit them up. Bro. For sure. Hell yeah, man. Appreciate you. Jennifer, you got anything? Follow me at Hella Soft. Um Fools and Goals October 29th. Fresh to death at season three. Those are your plans. That's that's your plan that fun. day. Uh you better be there, bro. When is this? Where was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I was just like zoned out. Hold on. Uh, um I'm doing fools again. Fools and ghouls. You better show up this time. When is it? Tell me. <laughs> October 29th. Okay. Bet. Yeah, it's a Saturday. You have. You now have. The last Saturday uh, of October. Yeah. You have until now or until then to think of a costume. Bet. Or pull up in all black. You know I can do that. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be there. follow Lords of Film with a Z. If you can speak a full sentence, you are qualified to be on the show. And if you watch TV, which I'm sure y'all do, you're qualified to be on the show. Please enlighten me. Please hit me up. Let's watch a movie. Let's talk about it. Um, and okay. then for booking, uh, follow me at Texas Chainsaw Alchemist. And for creative projects, message Hella Soft or Texas Chainsaw Alchemist. There you go, people. Um, sorry for y'all. That was nasty. Uh, <laughs> Uh, shop season three. That's uh, on 34th, 15, 19, 34th Street. Uh, yes, that will be there. That's our fellow pirate, Chris Vargas. That is uh, Tuesday through Saturday, 11 to 7 a.m. They have cool shit. I'm wearing his shit right now. I'm always wearing his shit. So he's he's the boy. Uh, we also, me and him and two other fellas, the other fools that are going to be here tomorrow. Um, we have Pirate Radio. That's Pirate Radio Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, for the most part, every Monday we'll drop an episode for that. And then you can follow the Snake Pit Rattlesnake Snake Roy, which is where this will be dropping. This is random, so who knows when this will come out. Um, if you would please like and subscribe to both of those. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. All of our podcasts are on the YouTube channel. That's where you can watch them. But if you want to listen, it's separately. It's Hellsoft Presents, Lords of Film. Pirate Radio presents, or no, Snake Pit presents Pirate Radio, and then the Snake Pit Rattlesnake Royal has three podcasts that we are doing right now. We're, we're busting our ass. Um, you can subscribe to the Patreon, patreon.com slash Snake Pit Studios. That's $5 a month, and that's where the money goes. We we're constantly updating it in the studio. I'm, I'm not taking any of the fucking money. It's always coming into this shit. And then if we get more, then we'll can afford better beer and, you know, more weed and all that. <laughs> Uh, thank you guys though for real um, thank you guys thank for you. fucking with us for 200 some odd episodes and then 20 plus episodes on every other goddamn podcast I truly do appreciate it I appreciate you for being here brother thank you um, yeah guys thank you guys and uh, we'll see you guys we'll see you guys next time one love and uh, thanks <laughs>